So today I'm talking about the absolute convergence test, which uh, is probably the last test that you're going to learn in class just because it is reliant on all the other tests. But the absolute convergence test has technically three possible outcomes uh, based on how you evaluate, or uh, based on the evaluation of whatever series you're given. So let's look at the first possible uh, thing. Uh, the first is it could be conditionally convergent. Now, if it's conditionally convergent, then it's going to be convergent as is. Th this is just you do a normal comparison test, or you do a normal convergence test, and if it converges, then it will be at least conditionally convergent. Uh, and this is... Uh, it will be divergent, as it explains here, when all the terms are made positive. Uh, and when would you make all of them positive? You would make it when doing the absolute convergence test, which is going to test if it's absolutely convergent. So if it's absolutely convergent, which is the second outcome, uh, that means that it will also be convergent if you make all the terms positive. Um, and the fact is that if you make it absolutely, or if your series is absolutely convergent, it will also automatically be conditionally convergent. And I will explain why later, because it makes, it's honestly common sense when you really look at it. But the third outcome, and the most easiest, is it could be divergent, which means it diverges by one of the convergence tests. So that means you do one of your, you do a limit comparison test, and it just comes out divergent and you find out that it's just divergent and neither of these two will be true. Okay, so a real basic example I'm not really going to work through, but just to kind of like explain the idea of what it is. Uh, if we look at the harmonic series, we all know it diverges, and that is because uh, it will diverge technically to infinity. Uh, although it is decreasing, it decreases too slowly that eventually these would or people argue that it would uh, hit infinity and the harmonic series is just one to remember it will always diverge but I say it diverges but if we make it alternating uh, then it would converge so if it's alternating one minus half plus one third and it keeps going then it would converge so imagine that we were just given negative 1 to the n, so it's alternating, uh, divided by n. Uh, and that was our original thing we were given, and we were evaluating that. Well, we would look, and we would see that the alternating version does, in fact, converge. But it would diverge if we made all the terms positive, which would make it conditionally convergent. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'll move on to my next example. So how do we do it? I already started kind of explaining, but uh, this one is a little bit more of a uh, worked out example. So let's look at this series right here, which I'll zoom in for. Um, so we are going to be looking at the sum um, n, n equals 0 to infinity. It's alternating because of the negative 1 to the n, and it's 1 divided by 2n. That's the actual, really what we're looking at. And when we evaluate it, we plug in the n, um, we would end up getting something like this. 1 minus half plus 1 fourth minus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth minus plus minus plus, and it would keep going until eventually we had 1 over infinity. Um, and if you don't know how this works, hopefully you do, or I would imagine you were even looking up this video, but uh, you would first plug in the n equals 0, so 0, and any constant to a 0 would equal 1, so 1 divided by 1 equals 1. If you were to plug in 1, then uh, 2 to 1 would just be 2, it would be half, and it would keep going like that until eventually we hit the 1 over infinity. But... Um, a good thing that I like to do is just uh, makes your uh, makes it a lot simpler 
is first look to see if it's absolutely convergent because if it's absolutely convergent then it is conditionally convergent so it only makes sense to do that part first and how we do that is we take the absolute value of our series and when you do that it's really only affecting the negative one to the n and it's just going to make it one to the n which just makes it one so it's just being multiplied by one so now we are really only looking at this uh, 1 divided by 2n, which would look like this. 1 plus half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and so on. So it's the same thing except for it is now not alternating. Uh, that means it is absolutely uh, convergent. And uh, this is just, you, you do your test and you see that it works. And what test exactly would you use for this? I'll let you think for a sec, um, pause the video, and try to figure out what kind of test you would use to prove that 1 over 2n is in fact uh, convergent when uh, it's in an absolute value. Hopefully you actually did pause it, um, but I'll start to explain. It's uh, actually, it converges by the geometric series rule and it converges to 2. So, um, again, we're looking at n equals 0 to infinity, and we're looking at the absolute value of this. Um, and when you do the geometric series rule, you use this equation. A is some multiple times uh, whatever is being multiplied by the nth term, and r is what's being uh, to the n term. Um, and in this case, half is our r value. And what you do is you have the 1 over 2n, which is equivalent to half to the n, because 1 to any power is still 1, so we can just rewrite it like this, uh, making half our r value. And a is just equal to 1 because there is no multiple, and when you plug that in, 1 minus uh, 1 divided by 1 minus half equals 1 divided by half, which equals 2. So just thinking about this, uh, when you make all the terms positive, you get 2. And when you make all the terms negative, it would only make sense that this converges to negative 2. So negative 1 minus half minus 1 fourth, it would eventually just do the opposite and would hit negative 2. So it only makes sense, like I was saying before, that absolutely convergence tests prove that it would be conditionally convergent under normal circumstances in an alternating series because it would converge somewhere between those two points of negative 2 and positive 2. So now we're going to go into a uh, actually complicated example just to make sure we've mastered the material and we fully understand this and we're going to be doing this problem right here. So, uh, wish I had a better webcam but no problem. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at n equals 1 to infinity uh, looking at that sum and we're going to be looking at negative 1 to the n, so an alternating series, uh, divided by n to the half plus 1, multiplied by n to the 1 third plus 1. So in this example, again, we're going to look at absolute uh, convergent, or we're going to test if it's absolutely convergent first. And uh, we just do that. I didn't put in the absolute values, but I just made it 1, uh, divided by, again, that. And that's going to be approximately equal to 1 divided by n to the half multiplied by n to the 1 third. And the reason being that we can just ignore those ones is because as these get closer and closer to infinity, the ends, the one becomes less and less important. So uh, we can actually just ignore that. You could actually ignore if it was plus 100 or something um, similar because it is just uh, irrelevant at this point. So now we can just evaluate 1 over n to the 5 6. Um, and by limit comparison test, first we're going to just uh, look at this. Um, the limit is n approach to infinity of this. When you divide by a fraction, you can just multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to look actually like this. And again, since that is n to the half plus 1 and n to the 1 third um, plus 1, you can just make that n to the 5 6 which would come out as 1. So that just lets us do our p-series test, which is the real test for convergence. Um, you're evaluating the sum of 1 divided by n to the 5 6 and by p-series test, 
p being 5 6 because n to the uh, p value is less than 1 making it not absolutely convergent so that means that we're now going to have to test if it is uh, conditionally convergent. Um, so I rewrote it here. So we're going to see if this is conditionally convergent, looking at the alternating series. And um, when you do that, you want to do an alternating series test. It just makes sense because you look at it, you don't see factorials, you don't see um, something to the nth power. Well, y you do here, but like, uh, not as in like a p-series and you don't see anything that could be like an integral. So it only makes sense at this point to um, attempt an alternating series test, which you'll find works. And uh, two things have to be met in order for an alternating series test to come out with convergence, and that is one, does the nth term go to zero? And two, are the terms decreasing? So you should already know that those two are uh, basic standards for uh, something to be convergent and we'll look at it in this example. So the first, uh, does the nth term go to zero? We're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of our sequence and it would look something like this. When you plug in one you would get negative one-fourth plus this complicated little thing right here, one divided by the square root of 2 plus 1 multiplied by the square uh, third square root of 2 plus 1 minus, and I didn't bother to keep writing, but it's going to alternate back and forth until it eventually gets to 1 divided by infinity, which is 0. And it decreases fast enough that we could say that right now it looks like it is going to, in fact, converge. And the second test, uh, are the terms decreasing? Yes, they are. They are getting closer and closer to 1 over infinity which is getting closer and closer to zero, making this uh, term converge conditionally.